through his writings, which will always be with us, I'm always coming back to those things that he taught me. It's neat to, to tell Doc's story because it's a really unlikely one. Doc was a fisherman early on because they had to eat. His family was poor and he provided fish for the family to eat. He told me the most beautiful fish he'd ever caught in his early life was a brook trout. His life was about fishing. He got drafted into the army, took his rod along with his rifle. And when he got to Japan, he started catching char, native char, and wondering, you know, how are these things related to this brook trout that I, I grew up around? So he was already starting to make these beginning thoughts in a young scientist's mind of zoogeography and systematics and how things were related. What he ended up doing in his career really was to redefine the way we think about trout. In the 1950s and 1960s, most anglers thought of trout as one species. And most fisheries management agencies raised fish and, and stocked them widely around. Uh, for a lot of anglers, a trout was a trout was a trout. And what species it was, whether it was a, a brown trout, rainbow, wasn't that critical. But I think Dr. Benke was one of the really leading forces in, in, in getting people aware of this amazing diversity of fish across the western United States and, and beyond. Before he came, we didn't have a legacy of trout conservation at Colorado State University. He really brought a prominence to this department in terms of salmonid fishes and fisheries. He played a mighty role in recognizing native cutthroat diversity, training students to appreciate that diversity who then went on to these agencies. And through the years, these disciples of Doc Bank that have managed these fish, uh, perpetuated their existence. Without him here at Colorado State University, we would probably have lost much of the diversity of trout throughout the West because nobody would have known why it was important. The other big contribution to me was, was the work he did to convey in a very clear way uh, why these fish were valuable. He started to write this column you know, about trout. Um, he had a crowd of, of 150,000 in Trout Unlimited. You know, I can't tell you how many of our members would, would talk about that's the first thing they would open to you know, in, in every issue is to see what Dr. Benke was writing about this time. And what a better audience than that to learn about conservation and, and you know, promote it and get people behind it. He took all of this knowledge that he had generated and he offered it to the whole world. And that has produced an angling public which is much more sophisticated and that comes back around to ask for those kinds of resources. We want native trout. There will never be anybody like him again, probably, but we need more people that are close to him to educate students and understand these cold water systems. And I think his legacy will hopefully provide our department a continuing emphasis in this area. And to have new people who are willing to take that sort of sophisticated view that we're going to need in our future to be able to have trout in rivers in Colorado.